Vitamin D is important for balancing calcium and phosphorus in the body. The difficult thing with vitamin D is that there's no agreed upon. Most of the research shows, and again, it's not looking at. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Kidney Coach YouTube channel. I am Fiona Chin, naturopath and co-founder of the Kidney Disease Solution and Kidney Coach. And today I'm joined by the wonderfully talented and beautiful Emily Carhill. So, Em, do you want to maybe we'll start with a bit of an overview of what vitamin D is because the word himself saying vitamin D, but it's not a vitamin. That's so, right. yes, maybe we'll start there and, and go forth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so vitamin D isn't actually a vitamin at all. Um, it's actually what's called a pro-hormone. So what that is is it's a nutrient that gets converted into a hormone in the body. It's also fat-soluble, which means it's stored in our fat cells in the body. And we primarily get it from three different places. So we get a little bit from food, although there's not many foods that have very high amounts of vitamin D. So for most people, they're going to get the majority of their vitamin D from the sun. Um, when our skin's exposed to the sun, the UV rays is converted uh, from cholesterol into vitamin D, which is a whole sort of process that has a number of different steps in the body. Um, and then the third place is from supplements. So people who supplement with uh, vitamin D, um, that's sort of the third uh, main source. And what about, I know you, you touched on the parathyroid, but let's get into the parathyroid and the link to the kidneys and why vitamin D, why we monitor it, why that's uh, something, a test that, you know, you and I would be asking any patient with vitamin, um, with kidney disease to go and have to check their vitamin D levels. Why is that? Yeah. So vitamin D is important for balancing calcium and phosphorus in the body. So it helps with increasing the absorption of calcium from food um, and also phosphorus as well. And one of the things that we see in often in people with kidney disease is this secondary uh, hyperparathyroidism. So our parathyroid hormone as well is involved in that process and, again, balancing calcium and phosphorus. And... Uh, when we don't have enough vitamin D, one of the things that can happen is our parathyroid hormone gets a bit hyperactive. And again, that's to do with our calcium and phosphorus and having high phosphorus levels. But um, vitamin D can be used to help reduce our um, elevated parathyroid hormone as well. But it's important to, when you're testing vitamin D, that you're not just looking at it in isolation. Um, because, as I said, it can also affect and influence calcium levels. It can influence um, phosphorus levels as well in the blood. So dosing, right? So we know what blood levels. So if someone comes and they have their test, their vitamin D is a bit low. Let's say they're sitting around 15. Um, you, uh, I have, keep, have switched between. In the US, we've been in the US reference range, they're sitting at 15. Yeah. Um, which I see people in Australia sitting at, which is so low, what sort of dosaging and, you know, looking at their calcium kidney function, you know, they've got maybe stage three or four, maybe their calcium phosphorus is okay, but maybe, you know, slightly bumped around, you know, the, the higher end or something like that. What sort of dosing are you thinking that you would suggest to someone with chronic kidney disease? Uh, it depends a little bit on how often they would be getting their vitamin D levels checked. And I guess, and part of that is sometimes how willing someone's doctors are to continue to monitor that because I wouldn't want someone to be on a very high dose if we're not going to have another vitamin T, vitamin D test done for months um, because that's not very, you know, obviously you can't monitor what's going on. So I guess typically I would recommend around you know, the sort of 5,000-ish I use a day because I feel like that's uh, generally a dose that will increase someone's vitamin D levels, um, but also a, a dose that's not going to increase them hugely in a short period of time. Um, and as well, it, you know, it does depend a little bit on is someone getting any sort of other sources of, of vitamin D 
is it someone who does have dark skin who really I, I don't think is getting much or any from the sunlight um, and also what uh, season it is. So I'll sometimes treat um, dose differently in winter as opposed to summer. Yeah, do exactly the same. Um, and I guess you're right. And it's interesting, the other thing about vitamin D too, right, you give one person 5,000 IU a day and you check them like two months later and they've gone from 15 to 30 really quickly. And then I have other patients where you give them 5,000 IU a day and they may be going out in the sun and they go from, I'm thinking in Australian reference ranges now, they may have gone from 60 to 65 and you think, what is going on here? So um, it is a very individual thing as well, I find, vitamin D. Have you, do you find the same thing? Yes, yeah, 100%. You can never um, predict what's going to happen, which is why you need to test. Thanks, Emily. So if you've liked this episode from The Kidney Coach, make sure you hit like and subscribe. If you put any comments down below, I will get back to you. I check that most days. If there's any videos you want Emily and I to make, any topics that you really want to know about when it comes to kidney disease, definitely let us know. Um, we're always after any extra great ideas because otherwise Emily and I sit and rack our brains about what, what you guys would like to hear. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, thanks again, Emily. I always appreciate your time. And until next time, be well, stay well. And if you need any more information, head over to www.kidneycoach.com. There's lots of great articles on there. Um, and there is one on vitamin D. I'll put the link below. All right. Till next time. Bye. Bye.